The domain name system, it really doesn't have a great place to fit in this architecture. It is the thing that converts user-friendly names like www.umich.edu to, to a, like a network-friendly address. These network numbers and IP addresses are important because they are the they encode the geography of the, of the connections of the internet. But we humans really don't care about the geography of the interconnections of the internet. www.umich.edu or www.facebook.com is what we want to remember. So I like to kind of think of the, the, uh, the domain name system as kind of like sort of somewhere either between the internet and the transport or between the internet and the link or somewhere like in this area, you know, somewhere here. And it's certainly not in the application layer. It's not the link layer. It uses the link layer. Um, but basically, it's kind of a little add-on to the side. So the domain name system is for user-friendly names. Okay? So let's talk a little bit about just how it works. Because domain names are what we use all the time. And IP addresses are what computers use all the time. And routers use. Routers really have no knowledge of the domain names. They simply move data based on the IP addresses. Numeric addresses are tough for people to remember. I remember in the old days, we would have little post-it notes on our computers, and that's how I would keep track. Oh, there's a new, Minnesota just put up a server. Let's put that number on my little post-it note. So the fact that they were numbers didn't bother us at all because there was only 40 of them, but quickly there was more than 40. And each campus, even in the early days, only would have one network number, but now campuses have 20 or even 40 network numbers. Multiple groups of addresses. They're groups of addresses, but there are many of them. They get reorganized. You move a server from one place on campus to another, like the, the Michigan web server. It was on our north campus. It would have one address. It was on our main campus. It would have another address. And so you don't want people to know what these IP addresses are. So they invented this notion of a domain name system. The name, the, the, the visible name that we could switch the mapping from the name to the IP address transparently. <clears throat> and so the domain name system is like the Internet's address book. And it's a big distributed database that's fast. It uses caching so that it's locally fast, even if the network is partially down. IP addresses reflect the technical geography. And they read right to left, at least to the point where the network number is kind of the physical attachment point for the campus or business. And then this part is the attachment point within that campus or business. And so the most specific, the least specific to most specific goes from left to right. Domain names, on the other hand, are like organizational structure. The least specific is on the far right, and then it goes more specific as we go left. So edu means educational institutions. umich.edu means the particular educational institution, University of Michigan. si.umich.edu means the School of Information at the University of Michigan. Not all schools, it's just a particular one. And then www is a particular server at that school. And it reads like a postal address. So if you think of where I teach, 2455 North Quad, it's kind of on Earth, and it's on the country USA, and it's in a zip code. It's in the state of Michigan, it's in Ann Arbor, and then this is the building, and then this is the room number in the building. So we go from very general to very specific. So domain names read, in a sense, right to left. Phone numbers and IP addresses read left to right. The other thing that's interesting about uh, domain names is that they're owned. They're owned from right to left. And so there are sort of, there's a hierarchy. And basically, an organization owns Edu. The organization's name is EduCause. It has conferences and other things, but one of the things that it does is it owns, in the public trust, the name Edu. So University of Michigan could go to Edu and say, hey, could I have umich.edu? And they would say, let me think about that. And then maybe they would give it. <clears throat> and they did, because University of Michigan... Nobody else had it, and it seemed like a good name, and University of Michigan was like accredited institution of higher education, so they would give it to them. If I wanted to say, like, hey, I'm Dr. Chuck, and I want to create Dr. Chuck University, and I could have drchuck.edu, and they would go like, no, you can't. You're not a university. You're not a, you're not an a educational institution. So they might say yes, they might say no. Things like .com and .org 
they're kind of a catch as catch can, and so the first one who gets there uh, tends to win. There's there's some situations where if if I got Coca-Cola.com and had no particular use for it, and Coca-Cola owned the trademark Coca-Cola, they could take it away from me unless I had a legitimate purpose for it. Um, it's harder for me to imagine a legitimate purpose for Coca-Cola, but Target.com might be a club for target shooting, and it would be difficult for Target to say, "Sorry, I got to take your 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 target shooting club away," because that's even though, though it's not as big as Target's company, it uh, it's a legitimate use. So, <clears throat> at each level, once the University of Michigan is awarded the University of Michigan, it creates a mechanism to award subdomains within that. And so there is actually a committee at the University of Michigan. And if we want, like our learning management system is called ctools.umich.edu, if we want that, we have to go to the committee and convince them to give it to us. A top level domain within the University of Michigan, we got one. The School of Information, where I'm a faculty member, is si.umich.edu, and they gave us that one. I could go to that committee and I could say, hey, I want to be drchuck.umich.edu. And they would say, no. You can't. So then the School of Information, where I teach, has si.umich.edu, and they have a committee, and they can give out subdomains within that. So you get the picture, right? So I could go there and I could say, hey, can I have drchuck.umich.edu, uh, si.umich.edu, drchuck.si.umich.edu? And they would say, no, but you can have csev.people.si.umich.edu. So once you own one of these things, you can give out subdomains. I do own drchuck.com, drchuck.com, and if there was high desire for something underneath drchuck.com, then I could have my own little business selling domains under drchuck.com. Uh, nobody seems to want any of those things. But, you know, some people have mail.com and other things, and, and so each one of these is a new potential for expansion. And so that's kind of how the domain name works, right? It is this mapping between these names. There is sort of this right-to-left ownership of these names, and uh, and you have to ask people to get those names. And so that's a real quick overview of the domain name system.